Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Welcome to the jungle. An online leak may have ruined the surprise, but the hype was real at Ford Field tonight as the team's new jerseys are revealed just days before hundreds of thousands of NFL fans roll into Detroit for the draft. Some special guest stars walk the runway at Ford Field tonight to debut the team's new look. Thanks for being here with us tonight. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Damon Fernandez and for Devin Skillian. That debut included a return of the popular black alternate jersey. It brought Ford Field to its feet tonight. And now Mara McDonald is on the football fashion duty tonight. Hey Mara, <laughs> the Lions made this into a reveal party for season ticket holders, huh? They sure did, Demond, and the energy in here, it was bananas, and yeah, it was all about that sweet new black uni. Let me show you. Give it up for Kirby Joseph! Somebody ought to get Kirby Joseph a fashion deal because he was giving some looks on the Ford Field runway tonight. Hey, y'all came out. Y'all showed out tonight. You know I had to come out with something for y'all. One pride, let go! The black uniform is the team's new alternate jersey, and Megatron was on hand for the big reveal. But they have also got spiffy new home and road uniforms. <laughs> Sam Laporta with special guest star Barry Sanders. You're looking at how the Lions have kind of turned over a new leaf. It's almost fitting that they ha have new uniforms. And Aleem McNeil and Chris Spielman showing it all. I couldn't be more proud of, a, of anybody on the team wearing 54 than Aleem. He's just been awesome. All of this was supposed to be a big reveal tonight, but an online ad blew the surprise early. Well, you know, we kept it secret for so long and then, you know, kind of a little bit of a buzzkill. It didn't matter, though. Fans loved it all, but one especially. Everybody that we talked to tonight, everybody says they like the black. They just think it's the best. I love them. The black is the favorite. It looks pretty sweet, don't you think? Absolutely. They look good. They look good. I like the black. Back here live, uh, Kirby's sachet down the catwalk was so good that I'm not sure we all caught all the details of that new black uni, which, in cool, which includes a very, very cool new blue and black helmet that goes with it. Those jerseys, by the way, they're already up for sale, and they're going to set you back about 175 bucks. And if you wanted to do something to jazz up these Lion fans pre-draft, this was it. We're live at Ford Field tonight. Damon, Kimberly, back to you. Hey, hey, Mara, do you know what the backstory is on the decision to bring back the new version of those black jerseys? So Rod Wood says about three years ago, Dan Campbell came to him and is like, you know, can we uh, bring back the black unis, you know, something a little edgy and tough? And he looked at him and said, Sure, win the division. I'll bring it back. Okay. So done and done. <laughs> back to you. There you go. And done. All right, yeah. Mara, thanks a lot. Love them. <laughs> you know, tonight we're asking you, what do you think of the Lions' new look? Just head on over to clickondetroit.com to take our poll. The article is located right there on the homepage. All right, less than a week to go, and the clock is ticking right now to make sure everything is ready to go for the NFL draft. Let's take a live look at the draft stage as it inches closer to completion. In less than a week, the Chicago Bears going on the clock with the first pick. And we're getting a look at some of the talent who will be performing as part of the NFL Draft Concert Series. Yeah, Big Sean, Detroit Youth <clears throat> Choir, and Brazi are set to perform during the three-day event. By this time next week, we'll know who the Lions have picked at number 29 in round one of the draft. Meantime, security preps are in place. Sheriff deputies from Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties federal teams from the FBI, ATF, and Homeland Security, and even some officers from across the border to help keep fans safe. You know, the NFL is sharing the spotlight, inviting local high school athletes to help announce a special draft pick. Jacqueline Francis caught up with one of them today, one week before they take the stage. This is Ayla Barnes. She was one of the first girls to play high school flag football in the state of Michigan. And come next week, she'll be on stage helping to announce the first round draft pick for the Detroit Lions. You're going to turn back like you're looking at a watch and you're making an L, right? And then you turn and throw. On the field, Ayla Barnes is a trendsetter. As a sophomore, she played girls high school flag football. At the time, there were only two teams in the state. 
It was just Bishop Foley and Rochester schools, and we ended up having a game, and we were like, you know what, this is really fun, and we're learning something, and this is something that could be really big. And then the Detroit Lions called. They came in, and they helped us with uniforms and flags and equipment. They also helped out with a field, Ford Field. It, it's surreal. You don't imagine yourself ever going on like a football field that big or an NFL football field. Now she's going to be on the NFL draft stage. She and players from the three other teams that took part in last year's girls flag football pilot program will help announce the Lions first round draft pick. I'm so grateful that I get to have this opportunity to bring publicity and new eyes to girls flag football. Meantime, the league is growing fast. This year, there are 24 girls high school flag football teams in Michigan. People do care about us and they do want us to be in the game. Remember to look for Ayla next week at the NFL Draft. Reporting in Madison Heights, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Wow, from two teams to 24 teams, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Now let's get you a check on the weather as a new round of rain moves into Metro Detroit tonight. Let's get right over to Kim Adams with a look at how it, if, if it will stick around and how long. Well, it will not stick around very long. In fact, it's pretty good timing. It's going to come overnight tonight while most of you are sleeping. Right now downtown, it's a pretty night. Cloudy skies, but it's dry. 56 in Detroit, upper 50s in Howell. Pontiac checks in at 59 and also Adrian. As you look at these temps, keep in mind our normal daytime high now is just 60 degrees. So we're definitely mild for this time of year, but that's all about to change. Up in Sandusky, it's only in the upper 40s, but pretty much mid to upper 50s across the board. There is some rain out there right now and it goes all the way from Alpena down through Mount Pleasant over to Grand Rapids and then back out to the west as well. But the severe storms are down to our south. St. Louis had a line of very strong thunderstorms come through and now there are multiple tornado warnings for parts of Illinois and Indiana. So we'll watch this line track just to our south. But we might hear the rumble of thunder. We're not expecting severe weather and we're also expecting the showers to move out sometime after about seven or eight o'clock tomorrow morning, leaving us with sunshine later on in the day and highs. Highs will be only in the upper 50s to low 60s, but that's OK. For the weekend, though, we get a little cooler, and we'll talk about that coming up. New at 11, two people in custody right now after a drug bust in Warren. Prosecutors say 41-year-old James Freeman and 42-year-old Christopher Hash distributed large amounts of drugs throughout Macomb County. On Tuesday, officers executed a search warrant and found fentanyl and crack cocaine. They seized over three thousand dollars a gun and a judge charger both men are charged with delivering a controlled substance freeman faces an additional drug and gun charge a detroit man is charged after police say he shot five people after a fight over a parking spot 32 year old damon hunter faces several charges including assault with intent to murder shooting happened outside a detroit nightclub on march 29th Police say an argument led to Hunter firing shots into a crowd and striking five men between the ages of 33 to 48. Bond is set at $5 million. Hunter is due back in court tomorrow. Now, if you have to head out tonight, remember a stretch of I-96 remains closed right now. Here's Sky 4 over the scene this evening above eastbound I-96 at Beck Road. Crews shut down the freeway to remove a rolled over semi truck from a ditch. Drivers heading that way will need to exit at Beck. Take it over to Grand River, then to Novi Road to get back on eastbound 996. Now, this closure will remain in place until 3 a.m. Well, doctors and physicians assistants at Ascension St. John Hospital are on the picket lines. They walked out of the emergency room this afternoon. Just 10 days ago, physicians, doctors, and others within Ascension Hospitals gave notice that this would happen. They're on strike against key problems, they say, such as lack of properly trained workers in the emergency room, which ultimately leads to longer wait times for patients. We've had enough. How many more patients' lives do we have to put at risk by being short-staffed, by having 16, 17-hour wait times, by letting these patients sit out there scared? How much longer are we going to take this? Ascension put out a statement today saying, quote, 
Team Health has a comprehensive contingency plan in place with a hospital that will ensure these contracted provider services and safe patient care will be uninterrupted. Emergency medicine physicians and mid-level providers staffing our emergency department are not employed by St. John Hospital. Emergency medicine physician and mid-level provider services are furnished to St. John Hospital through a contract with Team Health, end quote. We'll keep you updated on the negotiations.